to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. We have come to be edified. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we submit to you. Without your influence and without your presence, we're only wasting our time. You are that spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Today we rejoice and we celebrate victory. Because Jesus is truly alive i know he's alive huh. the healings show he's alive the deliverances show that you are alive the transformed destinies show you are alive the peace that surpasses all understanding in the midst of storms show you are alive Satan's desperation is proof that you are alive. Just one more minute and we'll be seated. He loves us that nation. The goodness of Jesus. The victory that we now celebrate, the basis for our confidence, the basis for our joy. I am serving a living God. His name is Jesus Christ. This is my confidence. He died and rose and gave me victory. I am faith. Let's sing it one more time without the instruments. We are serving a living God. I am serving. Sing it. Not an archangel, not a cherub, not a seraphim, the son of the living God. This is our confidence. He died and rose and gave me victory. us because he is a giver he gave us life and father we thank you for the beauty and the glory of your presence I sense in my spirit that the Lord is rolling away very strong burdens that have come from people now please listen carefully I believe with all my heart Please help them. There are people here, you may be standing, looking healthy and fine physically, but we are under the influence of all kinds of yokes. The Bible says, come unto me, all ye shall discover. Come unto me, come unto me. 
all you that are weary then heavy laden and there is a promise that I will give you rest I speak rest rest to your spirit listen drop every challenge whatever it is that you came here with joblessness sickness let your eyes and your attention be on Jesus turn your eyes upon jesus my friend the man on suit look at me there is a grace coming on you come bring him out no not this the man at the back come where are you from you are from lift your hands there is grace coming on you take that fire now you will never be the same in the name of jesus christ look down on his marvelous face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light there are weak people here receiving strength in your inner man the lord is imparting strength for the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength is small don't be distracted we'll sit down you came to encounter his presence strength strength let every weakness let every weakness spiritual weakness weakness in prayer weakness in word study you are in the place of strength. Strength is being imparted in your inner man. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, listen to me. I pray that you will learn the value of the presence of Jesus. That he is more than the leader of a denomination he is more than a man of god's message he is more than a project called ministry you have to understand this he is more than what a man of god who founded a ministry comes to stand to teach or talk about jesus christ is not an archangel jesus christ is not a cherub no god is not a man he only became a man if he's a man he must worship who created him i have been in awe of the wonder walking power and the presence of jesus you see when you give him your attention he will give you everything that men clamor for i can tell you this the secret to speed is to wait when you learn to wait you will look foolish while you wait but when his jealousy is done upon your life your life will move at a frequency that will first marvel you the benefactor of that grace five minutes in his presence can be equivalent to years of looking for contract listen to me Ten minutes in his presence we have allowed the devil lie to us that the presence of God is distracting just hurry up and let's face the day Moses said do not let us depart from here if your presence what else are we saying what else are we teaching I have learned the value of his presence the presence of Jesus the presence of the Holy Spirit who but him can gather such a people as this does a man have that ability do you have that intelligence based on what do you have the ability to gather over 10 to 15 thousand people who do you think you are but the presence if he can bring men can't he bring resources if he can bring men, can't he bring connectors? If he can bring men, can't he bring wealth? 
if he can bring men can't he open doors i'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made it when it's all about you it's all about you jesus it's all about you it's all about you it's all about you jesus hallelujah i'm going to be teaching for a short time and then I just sense that there is a grace that would be released somewhere in the course of the service to pray for the sick and to minister deliverance. We're in the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is Resurrection Sunday. He truly is alive. He's been alive. Listen, it's more than an Easter ceremony. There are people who are not born again who celebrate Easter recognizing and acknowledging the day is not where the power is it's the revelation of what happened i was speaking to them in lagos this morning and i said the currency that was used to buy you is called jesus like you use ten thousand naira to buy a cream the father used jesus to purchase you so everything that tries to devalue you you know the worth of a thing by the amount that was used to buy it so any lie of the devil that makes you think that because of your life you are not valuable oh i didn't go to school i cannot speak english well and you allow your sociological context to bully you no not in his presence there is a confidence that comes when we understand the price that was paid this is not some religious talk you have to believe it not even the tears of jesus moved the father to change his mind what sort of love is that while jesus was crying the father would have said you've tried man at least you've seen the efforts i've made continue by yourself while he cried eloi eloi lamak sabatana it was not an earthly language and the father said i know jesus you're wondering where my attention is man man joshua selman so when sickness comes when failure comes there is something it is doing that you must resist and reject because the father purchased you and something of inferior value is trying to buy you back the only thing that can buy you back is what is greater than jesus if you can find something more precious than his blood then it is worth buying you back oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount i know nothing but the blood of jesus so i'd like you to be sensitive as i teach there is a strong presence of jesus in this place and whilst the word of god is coming be prepared to wave that sickness goodbye be prepared to wave that infirmity goodbye everything that was represented on that cross must answer to the name of jesus christ if failure was represented on that cross if weakness was represented on that cross if limitations were represented on that cross then it's time for it to go please be seated god bless you god bless you God bless you. Amen. We'll be very fast. That time is gone. 
I really want to appreciate everyone. I think I should take the time to really appreciate everyone. Um, there are not many ministries that have the privilege of this kind of experience. As a new work within a city is marvelous what the Lord has done and what he's doing. And many times it's easy to thank the Lord for his grace, but ignore those who are obedient to the call. I sincerely want to appreciate everyone for the sacrifices that you make week in week out it's a very difficult thing managing um, so many people like this but defying the limitations of the workers and focusing your attention on Jesus thank you for that sacrifice the Lord bless you the Lord increase you one thing I can assure you of is that it will not take long when the beauty and the glory of the spirit will be revealed in and through your life in the name of jesus christ hallelujah number two let me quickly talk let's just do a few housekeepings and then we'll get to the word i want to talk about the power of testimonies at my retreat entering this year the lord had to rebuke me i'm one person who by my nature um I'm not a spotlight person at all. I like to just hide in the background, sit quietly, let Jesus be glorified. And because of that, um, I'm not sure the world has heard one-tenth of the marvelous things that God has done and is doing through this grace and this ministry. And from a sincere heart, many times we just downplay it, but the Lord cautioned me and told me the power of testimonies more than just making people believe that a man of god is genuinely anointed testimonies have a compelling power they draw people to see that it is true that jesus is alive it is true that he heals he saves he delivers praise the lord so i want you to know that every week we allow people who have received testimonies all through the week to come and testify and I want to encourage you it doesn't matter who make sure that every time you're around the media stand you can meet them the PR outside and register your testimony even all through the week let's know what Jesus is doing in this house and in your life it is a major tool for the global harvest the world must know that this profession of faith that we so boast about works that there are proofs that validate that Jesus is alive. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. And then just to quickly, while I have our attention, um, talk a bit about the Koinonia School of Ministry. Now, we have a school of ministry. This will be the eighth session. We've been running it for eight years. It's been an amazing encounter where we raise students. This came... As a result of a burden that was alongside a divine instruction to mentor and raise and build people not just in ministry fivefold as we know but it cuts across business you know leadership and so on and so forth and um, the campus had only been in Zaria but now this will be the first time we're having the Abuja campus and we're glad to know that yes all of the registrations and everything um, is already done. I want to apologize for so many who um, desire to be part of the School of Ministry. We had to cut down the enormous amount of students' application. We wanted just maybe two, 300 people, and we had an application of over 1,300 people. And you see, this is um, at least for a first set here. So please do not feel bad that you were not able to make it. Just be patient. By the grace of the living God, the next session will open up for more people. And um, I don't know if we're here, but there is one of the universities in Florida. We're still in talks with them. They came over trying to see how they can collaborate with the School of Ministry to upgrade our standard and then to see how they can offer degree and diploma programs. So, Praise the Lord. We're still in talks with them so that if God grants grace, this is his project. So if he grants us the grace and the permission, then we'll be able to work things out. But for now, please, this is just to be able to stress 
because there are still calls coming in from several people and then for our international community you would notice that we limited those who would participate from around the world the reason is number one because of the pandemic because of the pandemic uh, and then number two because we want to make sure that everything we have within our care for now is manageable so please we apologize for those who um, were preparing to travel from around the world for the school of ministry the fourth thing i'll talk about very quickly is that um, there has been a growing concern over you know counseling several people usually while in zaria i would have times designated to see people but the burden was becoming too much we had people literally from all across this nation and then coming sometimes i would start counseling from 10 in the morning up until 10 or 11 in the night and we had to cut it because of some other things you know and so on and so forth um, and I know that for many of you it's been a burden it is not my intention in any way to refuse access please I, I need to I need to state this clearly so that we do not misunderstand the things that we do I just returned from Lagos straight to this place so it's been it's been an enormous demand you know the Bible says to whom much is given much is also expected so if and when we do handpick a few people especially after the service please do not think that um is is a show of favoritism and so on and so forth i'm sure that god will give us the wisdom to be able to build a system that will allow for counseling and prayer it is part of our mandate as ministers of the gospel to be available to those we are sent to if we are not available to those we are sent to we are not in ministry praise the lord ministry it's not about being exalted in a position and then being far from those you are called to but the management systems around it for our own health for our own lives we must put things in place so please let me just clear the air over that praise the name of the lord um i apologize we have a number of guests and dignitaries maybe we'll just appreciate them at the end of the service so that i'll get to the word but i really honor everyone here politicians businessmen members of parliament we honor you some are in front some are scattered praise the name of the lord thank you so much great people my dear friend manasseh i see my dear friend and his wife pastor jakes god bless you sincerely appreciate you hallelujah praise the name of the lord amen just one or two scriptures I'm seeing people running in the spirit. Now these things, these are supernatural things. Literally. I don't know why God does these things sometimes, but I believe that is a grace that is coming to move people into the next levels. Please, regardless the overflows, regardless wherever, I, I believe that that grace, people will literally begin to run. Some of them run out by the spirit the lord by it is destroying delays of all kinds and i want you to be sensitive just help them whether you are an usher or not since i've seen it let me just declare it in the name of jesus father those who must drink of this grace that makes for speed over their lives over their destinies everything holding you back everything holding you down such an anointing is coming upon them. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God. The same way the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I speak speed over your life. Supernatural speed. Help them please. Speed over your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Speed over your life. Within a short time, you will see the grace of God picking you, lifting you, bringing you honor. I decree and declare, help them please. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
and hear me everything every force that keeps you down in the name that is above all names i declare it must let you go now please be seated matthew chapter 28 matthew chapter 28 matthew chapter 28 just to consider a lesson tonight and then we pray in the end of the sabbath the bible says as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week came mary magdalene and the other mary to see the sepulcher and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the lord now watch this is painting for us the sin of the resurrection the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not. For I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here. He is risen as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There you shall see him. Lo, I have told you. Verse 8 says, And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy. And did run to bring his disciples word and as they went to tell his disciples behold Jesus met them saying all hail and they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him and Jesus said unto them be not afraid go tell my brethren that they should go into Galilee and there they shall see me now when they were going behold some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priest all the things that were done take note now and when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel they gave large money unto the soldiers why saying say ye his disciples came by night and stole him away while he slept and if this come to the governor's ear we will persuade him and secure you so they took the money and did as they were taught and this saying is commonly reported among the jews unto this day please look up the bible says among the many things that satan could not stand was the resurrection not just the cross you know many times when we teach about the matters of redemption it looks like all that we stop at is the cross and whilst the cross is a very important component of redemption it does not stop at the cross if jesus stopped at the cross that would be fatal for us are we together there is nothing new about a man dying for people founders have died for people parents have died for their children but the nature of the death of Jesus required resurrection to truly prove the father's love now listen very carefully the Bible says when Jesus resurrected from the dead it was such a threat to the gates of hell that they came together and took counsel and said you know what we will give you money money was introduced are you saying that money has always played a role to fight the resurrection he took money they brought money and they said this is what will happen we will use our influence and secure you just say the disciples came and stole him we may not do anything about the fact that he walked upon the earth and healed the sick we may not do anything about the fact that there was a real cross at Golgotha but that resurrection part because there were already prophecies that if it's true that he rose from the dead then it will give the basis for our justification it was not his death that justified us 
let me give you a little story the entire discourse of redemption started from what we call the lord's supper are we together now the bible lets us know that jesus was with 12 of the disciples and 12 is the prophetic number of government government and so that was the whole world in covenant coming into one man when he took of the bread and the cup and gave it to them in theology we call it the doctrine of interpenetration is the mystery by which two entities become one is the same principle we use in marriage when a man and a woman become joined even though they are separate personalities the bible says they have become one are we together now so if jesus were to die for the sins of the world there had to be a technology to transfer the whole world into him are we together now and that happened the basis for that connection was the lord's supper whilst they ate the bread that jesus said he was they took of the wine now he was qualified to take on the entire sin of the whole world the next sin would be gethsemane the bible says when he got to gethsemane he cried do you know why he cried he did not cry because he was afraid of death no he had been speaking about his death time and again i will die and come back to life he cried because something was happening in gethsemane the bible says he who knew no sin became sin that was what was happening there he was crying because until then mortality would not walk in him remember there was a time he walked through the crowd even though he was born of a woman he was fathered by the spirit joseph was only a caretaker the holy ghost played the fathering role of jesus if jesus died and did not resurrect his body would still be fresh on the ground he could not be corrupted because it was not the seed of a mortal man are we together now now listen carefully so when jesus was at gethsemane the bible says he cried for the first time he tasted the pain of humanity in its full strength and he even said father if it is possible you are the god of all wisdom there is still a system you can route without my going through this he said nevertheless not my will but your will be done now watch this you have to back up and go to genesis 3 to understand what man lost so that you will understand what jesus regained when man fell many things happened number one he lost the holy spirit the holy spirit is the life of god he's not the career he's the very life of god are we together now number two man lost righteousness the very nature of god the nature that gives you access to the riches that are in god men like ew kenyon would define righteousness as the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt condemnation and inferiority it's a very powerful definition but it's not just a consciousness it is the nature of god at work he lost that number three man lost dominion understand what man lost sovereign control how did man lose dominion he lost dominion by transferring responsibility there is a law in this kingdom that every time you don't take responsibility you transfer your authority because responsibility and authority goes together so when god came to adam and said adam where are you what is this that you have done adam transferred the responsibility to his wife you notice god did not talk to adam again he said all right you have transferred do you know if the woman kept quiet immediately she will become the head of the man when god came he met the person he gave sovereign authority as head when satan came satan did not meet adam he came through eve if eve recognized authority she would have referred satan to adam but she took laws into her hands and she was deceived when she ate of the fruit nothing happened when she gave the man and he ate suddenly things began to change because the dominion was given to him as head over his wife listen carefully i'm explaining the realities of redemption so that we will know what resurrection brought help that lady praise the name of the lord so he lost dominion adam 
he complained and blamed the woman he transferred both responsibility and authority woman what is this that you have done she said the serpent she transferred responsibility and authority serpent what have you done he didn't blame anybody that's how he became the god of this world he silenced i own up to it that i'm a deceiver satan that's why when jesus christ was gaining it back he kept quiet with pontius pilate won't you talk and he kept quiet his silence was not weakness it was a system of reclaiming back that dominion there is a lesson here you need to learn every time you transfer responsibility you also transfer dominion responsibility and dominion work together peripasu you do not have response dominion and then without responsibility so for those who know their right in christ you must also know your responsibility in christ are we blessed so man lost the holy spirit man lost righteousness you have to understand this and man lost authority over creation that key that god gave man there was a throne that represented adam's dominion in the realm of the spirit when god looked he could not see adam seated there again that was why he said where are you adam was roaming around in the garden but spiritually my god this is also a lesson that means when god calls you when god anoints you there is a real throne in the realm of the spirit that signifies your ranking and your power recognized by god recognized by devils are we together now and from that time there was a statement that was made the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent and satan began to search for everybody that looked like the seed when eve gave birth to cain satan thought cain was the seed so he came to cain he until man came there was no possibility of spreading through reproduction reproduction was a concept satan had never seen it was only creation it was adam's dispensation that started the idea of spreading through reproduction satan did not know what god built in a woman so he began to study and he saw a woman's stomach protruding then she gives birth to a child and satan is saying what wait a minute something is going on here and he thought she could only give birth once so he came to Cain and when he found out that a woman could give birth indefinitely he said there is problem that means this woman has the power together with her husband to multiply bodies that can host and carry the glory of God Satan began to search for that seed everybody Satan ever attacked in scripture was in hope that he was the seed when moses was born he thought that he was the seed and he made children die because of him every time there was a battle for over israel it was because he had heard the moment god entered the covenant with abraham satan knew that the seed is within this vicinity it has to be among the jews from that day the jews got into trouble the lesson here is that satan does not attack for nothing whether you are aware of what is on you or not satan studies people and handpicks them carefully there are people who are not worth his attack no he will see you and pass you even if you call him he will greet you focusing on others that he's looking for listen to what i'm telling you satan does not attack men He's attacking the word of prophecy that is able to empower those men to be part of kingdom come. Samson, prophet Samuel, Elijah, all through. When John the Baptist came in the spirit and the power of Elijah, notice what the spirit of the Antichrist was, the question he was asking through the Pharisees. Are you the one? He wanted to know the one so he would kill him. And John kept confusing them. He said, I am the voice of one crying. What is this? Are you the one or not? And then, listen carefully. The Bible lets us know that after 18 years of rigorous training, from age 12, we do not hear about Jesus again. The next time we hear about him, he's 30 years old. And he comes to be baptized. 
baptism you see john was not a baptist john was a prophet baptism was among many things a strategy that was invented for him to identify that one so every time you would pour water on people he would look up he would say you can go pour water on people look up you say you can go pour water on people you can go suddenly he comes out and looks at this one and says behold the lamb that was slain he says i am not worthy to untie the latchet of your shoes and then jesus said suffer it to be so that scripture will be fulfilled he dips him in water when he brings him out your bible says and the heavens open and god said all right creation there's no hiding again this is that beloved son the one you have been looking for notice from that day satan did not have any business with anyone again jesus became the object of attack he began to pursue everything jesus the wisdom of the father was being played so when jesus gave himself up at gethsemane there was something he was doing that satan did not understand the bible calls this mystery the hidden wisdom of god that if the princes knew if satan knew that his escorting jesus to the cross was a disaster to him he will make sure jesus did not die here's the mystery satan did not understand that the burden of the whole world can come into one person it was not part of remember even though originally he was the light bearer he had an assignment as the custodian of the mysteries of god but it was not everything about god he had it was on the excellency of the light he had that he thought he could run a parallel government so there were other aspects of god he did not know the whole world was in christ he had now become the second adam in experience now there are lots of parallels i wish i had time i would have worked a few things realize something number one every time satan wants to attack adam he goes to eve satan today is still attempting to spite god and the person he attacks is his bride the church he is still attacking that eve again and if we make the mistake the first eve made remember the first eve did not acknowledge authority that was a mistake so the second eve must be like esther that was a mystery of the book of esther the first she made a mistake she forgot that she was only queen because she married the king when esther wanted to make the whole mistake he had mordecai who is the type of the holy spirit advising her and say be careful you are about to make a mistake that will cost you your position do not make the mistake of the second eve the first eve she did not refer satan to the authority that was above her now the bride of christ as the second eve he comes to us again he comes to propose to you and you refer him to the authority that you are under the bible says submit unto god then on the basis of your submission resist the devil you don't resist him by your own authority it is on the strength of your submission you resist the devil and he will flee. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray, pray for your destiny. Salaska de baska na kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pagotos koto pray kate kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.